Hey everybody, Home Slice Hunter here, and in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing an incredibly unique Umbreon moveset that helped a trainer win the final Pokemon Go Regional Championship in North America this season over in Los Angeles. Now, the trainer who won, none other than fellow content creator, rise to the occasion, and his Umbreon is anything other than ordinary. Typically, Umbreon runs Snarl, Foul Play, and your choice of Legacy Move, Psychic, or Last Resort. But Rise ran Snarl, Foul Play, and Dark Pulse, so he ran a mono dark moveset with zero coverage. Now this does help Umbreon be stronger neutrally, but makes it weaker into opposing dark types. So on his team, he has Annihilate and Wigglytuff to help beat other dark types, and rounds up the team with Dugong, Lantern, and Shadow Gligar. In his first streamed matchup of the day, going up against Signal in the winner's semis of Group B, Signal running Lantern, Cresselia, Skeledurge, Shadow Dragonair, Mandibuzz, and Shadow Claw, Shadow Alolan Sandslash. The battlers have locked in the teams for game number one. It's Shadow Gligar on the lead for Rise into the Mandibuzz for Signal. Signal hoping to catch that mono dark Umbreon with the Mandibuzz, but he's unsuccessful as Rise ends up leading with the Gligar and has the Umbreon in the back. The dark pulse from the Mandibuzz does get shielded up by the Gligar. Gligar going to return fire with a barrage of Aerial Aces. Aerial Ace number one is going to connect. Rise over farming, going for Aerial Ace number two. This does not threaten a knockout yet, so Signal is going to no shield. Signal going to go this time for the Aerial Ace, Rise tries for the catch, but Signal with great patience fires off the Aerial Ace instead and now sends in Lantern. And this is a situation where Rise is going to be going for Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse does hit harder and has better damage per energy than Foul Play. Lantern returning fire with the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is going to do some solid damage onto the Umbreon, but Umbreon is extremely bulky, able to withstand that damage and go for another Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse connects onto the Lantern. Lantern continuing to farm up energy, going for another Thunderbolt. It doesn't look like this will be enough to KO. Umbreon should be able to hang on here. Umbreon does survive, makes it to the Dark Pulse, and this should be able to knock out the Lantern. Dark Pulse into the Lantern does pick up the KO, and right off the bat, we see the value of having that Dark Pulse. In comes Cresselia. Cresselia tries for a Psycho Cut farm down, and there's the foul play. Cheaper than the Dark Pulse, able to force a shield from the Cresselia. Aggressive switch back into the Shadow Gligar and Gligar will be met with the Moonblast. Moonblast connects, dealing substantial damage. The combo play with the Aerial Ace from the Mandibuzz, the No Shield by Rise. Rise has a bunch of energy. He's actually intentionally not going to throw that energy because he wants farm on the Lantern. As we saw there, he could have thrown the moves at any time, but he doesn't want to KO the Mandibuzz. He wants to use this as an opportunity to get energy onto that Lantern. And now Lantern with a massive energy head start versus the Cresselia. Cresselia commits the shield on the Surf. Surf is not going to be doing a ton of damage. Signal would have preferred to shield a Thunderbolt. So Rise getting the shield on the Surf is definitely to his advantage. And now Rise is in a good spot where he should be able to fire off the combination of a Surf plus a Thunderbolt and be able to take this win. As Grass Knot is not going to be enough to knock out the Lantern here. It's going to get the Lantern very low, but it will not KO. Lantern commits to the Thunderbolt and gets there. Thunderbolt, I believe, will be very close to knocking out here. Cresselia barely hangs on, but the Snarl from the Umbreon takes the win. And that's a game one win for Rise. The Umbreon's in trouble in the next match, leading into the Mandibuzz. Safe switch Wigglytuff. Signal running a line so weak to Wigglytuff. He was ABA, and he's forced to bring in Lantern. Lantern going for the Surf. The No Shield by the Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff going for the Disarming Voice. If Signal No Shields, Rise can play for Switch. And that's what Signal does. Signal No Shields. This is a very safe shield for Rise. Rise more than happy to just commit to a farm down, take Switch advantage with the Wigglytuff, understanding that the Mono Dark Umbreon has no bad matchups remaining. Mandibuzz tries to make the Aerial Ace lose his charge attack priority. The Icy Wind connects, and this Wigglytuff is putting in a tremendous amount of work for Rise. Aerial Ace will pick up the KO. In comes the Lantern. The switch to the Dragonair. Dragonair will be answered with the Umbreon. Umbreon going to fire off Foul Plays here. Foul Play just because Signal is expected to heavily protect this Dragonair. The Dragonair is the only way that Signal can beat the Lantern. Body Slam connects onto the Umbreon. Umbreon building up to the Dark Pulse, going for the Foul Play, and Foul Play is going to grab a shield from the Dragonair. Dragonair farming up so much energy. The Dragonair does have the back-to-back -back here, which means if Rai shields, unfortunately, he will lose charge attack priority trying to go for the Dark Pulse, and this Dragonair exits the matchup with quite a bit of health. 
That is unfortunate. There's a full health Lantern remaining. Lantern has to try and sweep this end game. The Body Slam by the Dragonair is going to connect. No shields remaining for the Lantern. Lantern needs the perfect overfarm signal. Goes for the catch, but we see Rise going for an undercharge on the Thunderbolt. The undercharge it's a good one. He's going to get energy. And now he has to make it to the move. He exits with the Surf loaded. Surf is resisted into the Dragonair, but it will pick up the KO with one additional spark. And that's a 2-0 to zero win for Ryze. Ryze now moves to the winner's finals of Group B, going up against Man in the Planet. Man in the Planet is running a team with Vigoroth, Shadow Whiskash, Skarmory, Purified Sableye, Chargebug, and Shadow Gligar. And right off the bat, that Double Dark Umbreon looks incredible into Man in the Planet's team. Man in the Planet has zero Pokemon on his team that resist the dark moves. And his counters to Umbreon, Chargebug, and Vigoroth, Umbreon still has a ton of neutral play there. So we can definitely expect a healthy dose of Umbreon from Ryze in this matchup. The battlers are locked in for game number one, Annihilate for Ryze, Chargebug for Man in the Planet. Man in the Planet not running a typical charge of bug, he's running Crunch and X Scissor, so no discharge. The Crunch is going to be no shielded by Rise. Do we see the Crunch debuff? We do not. Rise building up to the Shadow Wall, baiting with the Night Slash, and getting the shield from Man in the Planet. That's a big bait from Rise. Rise goes for the catch of the Crunch onto Umbreon, but Man in the Planet gets the prediction correct, goes for the X Scissor, and that is super effective damage onto the Umbreon. That is not what Rise was hoping to see. Rise going to be hit now with another X scissor that's going to do some substantial damage to the umbreon but umbreon very bulky able to survive two super effective attacks the dark pulse connects the switch into the shadow whiskash shadow whiskash will be able to outpace but man in the planet just wants energy here he lets rise get to the dark pulse dark pulse connects that plus a couple snarls will put the whiskash below half hp Shadow Whiskash farming up to 99 energy, picking up the knockout with the Mud Bomb. Whiskash has a massive amount of energy, but here's the thing. Annihilate has a Night Slash, and Annihilate does win charge attack priority. Night Slash doesn't knock out here, but it does do a lot of damage. So we already see the No Shield by Man in the Planet. We see the boost from Rise, and now he has a choice to make. He is going to commit the shield. Boosted counters, very valuable. Gets the counter down thanks to the boost. In comes Chargebug. Chargebug going to be met with the Night Slash. Man in the Planet letting it through there's another night slash boost oh my goodness and those boosted counters definitely add up in the end game in the one shield dugong should have been in a winning position regardless despite that boost but my goodness the boost definitely nice when it happens to you and rise now in a completely commanding position the icy wind is going to be shielded rise did no shield the first understanding man in the planet couldn't brave bird on the first one because if he brave birds on the first one then he's just going to get knocked out by icy winds because his defense has been debuffed he's now going to shield here and fire off the icy wind and this icy wind won't quite knock out here but we do see one more ice shard getting the ko and rise is able to take game one neutral lead in game number two slightly favored for rise lantern versus the vigoroth vigoroth firing off the body slam immediate no shield by rise lantern does win the zero shield here which is a pretty nice spot to be in. he goes for the surf and the catch onto the charge bug by man in the planet but man in the planet is not going to appreciate the fact that there's a gligar being brought onto the field and oh no as we take a look at these back lines dugong for rise shadow gligar for man in the planet he does get the crunch debuff but that's still not going to be enough to flip this rise it's gonna full send the dig the shield by man in the planet man in the planet now going to bait with the x scissor rise will commit the shield he wants to keep alignment here He's looking to over farm. It's now low enough where an aerial ace will knock out. Man in the planet thinks about it, lets it go, and unable to win switch advantage. This game will be a 2-0 victory for Rise. Rise fires off the aerial ace. Aerial ace shielded by Man in the Planet. Man in the Planet massively over farming to the back-to-back -back body slams. Rise unable to shield. As if he shields, he gets knocked out by the second body slam. He can just send back in the lantern, and he should be in a very good position. Body slam doesn't KO. Rise knows that. Immediate no shield here. Going to fire off the Surf. Surf will come close to knocking out the Vigoroth. And then, unfortunately, it's the Gligar and it's the Dugong in the back. And there's just nothing that Gligar can do here. Man in the Planet understands it's game over. He's not going to throw his charge move. Icy Wind knocks Gligar out of the sky. And two Ice Shards KO the Vigoroth. And Ryze qualifies for Day 2. First match of day number two against Dr. Roast Beef, who has Chargebug, Altaria, Azumarill, Annihilate, Alolan Sandslash, and Clodsire. 
and with the Azumarill on the team, does make it harder for Ryze to run Umbreon. So he leaves it on the bench for game number one. Dugong on the lead versus Shadow Alolan Sandslash. Sandslash strikes first with the drill run, immediate shield by Ryze. And this might be a clue to Dr. Roast Beef that Ryze is thinking about going for the Icy Wind, but he does not. He full sends the drill run. Dr. Roast Beef calls the bait, the drill run connects. And now, Ryze in a pretty nice position after landing that damage. He's gonna no shield the drill run number two as that will connect onto the Dugong. Dugong can now very safely go for Icy Winds. It's double resisted, but it will KO. The shield by Dr. Roast Beef trying to make a play for switch advantage. He will fire off this drill run. The Alolan Sandslash extremely low. Ryze double shielding for switch. Ryze going for the Icy Wind. Dr. Roast Beef has to make a choice. Does he want to shield? Does he think he can make a move? He's going to let it through. And now he can send in a Zoomerill going for an incredibly aggressive bubble farm down. But Ryze is very okay with this. He needed switch advantage. He has the Lantern in the back, which does amazingly into the Azumarill. Azumarill gets the full bubble farm down. In comes the Lantern, firing off the play rough as soon as the Lantern enters the field. And then we should see a switch to the Clodsire momentarily. Clodsire up a shield, but even up a shield, it is so helpless versus Shadow Gligar. Look at the Stone Edge here. The Stone Edge does not two-shot, and since this Clodsire is on Mudshot, Mudshot basically does no fast attack pressure to this Gligar. So, even though Stone Edge did pretty close to half, the Clodsire is not going to be able to win this matchup. Stone Edge is going to connect. The Gligar, perfectly fine in this matchup, going to fire off the Dig. Dig will hit for massive damage onto the Clodsire. Clodsire not quite getting KO'd. Dr. Roast Beef accidentally older farms and plays to a CMP tie that he does not win. Ryze picks up the KO, but realistically, even if he did throw that energy, it was low enough that Lantern would still be able to sweep this endgame. The play rough is going to connect. Lantern makes the Thunderbolt, and this is pretty close to Thunderbolt range on the Azumarill. Thunderbolt connects, down goes Azumarill, and that's a game one win for Ryze to the occasion. Moving to game number two, Lantern, an absolute magnet for the Azumarill. We see the save switch into the Charger Bug, and that's going to be answered with the Shadow Gligar. So Dr. Rose Beef running an ABB style team, trying to bait out the Gligar to let Clodsire sweep in the back. But Rise, with his team, ran two answers in the back to Clodsire, so Clodsire is not going to have to deal with the Gligar. But there's a Dugong, and Dugong does well enough into Claude that this is going to be an extremely unfortunate situation for Dr. Rose Beef. Dr. Rose Beef shielded once. There's another dig headed at the Charge Bug. He is going to double shield, hoping for some reason that Ryze gives up switch, but Ryze has no intentions of doing so. Ryze shields up the X Scissor, makes the dig. This will knock out. Ryze winning switch advantage and shield advantage means that this game is instantly over. In comes the Azumarill, only getting two bubbles of farm. Ryze sends in the Lantern. And the Clodsire is answered with the Dugong. Dugong in such a commanding position, having the shield advantage as well, shielding up the Stone Edge, and then Ryze can begin to debuff and debuff and debuff with these on absolute onslaught of Icy Winds. Icy Wind is going to connect. Dr. Roast Beef firing off the Stone Edge. This is debuffed, and it does not get same type attack bonus, so Dugong able to withstand the damage. Dugong just going to pick up the knockout with the Icy Wind, removing the Clodsire from the field, removes any possibility of a win con. Back in comes the Azumarill. Rise going for the Icy Wind as well. Not only is Azumarill in a nightmare matchup, but its attack has been lowered as well, and that's just the absolute nail in the coffin for Dr. Roast Beef in this series as Ryze will fire off the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt connects, getting Azumarill deep into the red. Azumarill just gonna get sparked down, and Ryze takes the 2-0 victory. Ryze now moves to the winner semifinals, going up against Elite. Elite's team has Chargebug, Skeledurge, Guzzlord, Azumarill, Vigoroth, Shadow Gligar, and he has a very sharp suit. The leads are set for game number one, Another team where it's tougher to bring the Umbreon, so Ryze is going to go for the safer picks, leading Shadow Gligar versus the Vigoroth. Gligar does do pretty well in Vigoroth, but Vigoroth is able to win the Zero Shield. Body Slam will connect, dealing substantial damage. Ryze will return fire with the Dig. The No Shield by Elite. Elite knows that he's going to be able to make it to this Body Slam, going to overfarm as much as possible, so whatever Ryze sends in doesn't get a lot of farm. But Ryze wants Switch Advantage. Ryze commits the Shield, the Switch into the Gligar. Oh no, Disaster Strikes, as Gligar is answered with Dugong. Going for the Dig. Dig shielded by Ryze. Ryze is going to look for a full farm down here, decides against it at the last second. 
and it's just gonna fire off the icy wind. So Rise has gone down two shields very early in this game. Elite has the Skeledurge. Skeledurge has a lot of heavy lifting ahead of it. Rise over farming, baiting with the icy wind and getting the shield from Elite. Elite now debuffed, which makes this matchup a lot more difficult. A Shadow Ball will not KO. And this is not incinerate range either, so Ryze is barely going to make the drill run right before the incinerate damage picks up the KO, forcing the final shield from Elite, and he can just send in the lantern. He's gonna fire off the disarming voice, but this is debuffed. That does nothing to the lantern. He's gonna farm up energy here, sending in the Vigoroth, failing the catch, and that's gonna be a game one win for Ryze, as the Skeledurge is going to succumb to the damage from Surf on the lantern. Leads are set for game number two, and what a lead for Rise! Leading Lantern into a Zoomeril in this best of three. Elite throws a bubble, save switches into the Vigoroth, and this is honestly a bit of a problem for Rise. He doesn't have a strong response here. He fires off the Surf, sends in the Gligar, but this is what Elite was hoping for. Elite trying to bait out the Gligar to let Chargebug 1v2 in the endgame. Body Slam connects, dealing substantial damage. Rise returns fire with the Aerial Ace. We do see the shield by Elite. Elite continuing the farm. Elite goes for a body slam again, getting to the back to back and again forcing charge attack priority versus the Gligar. Gligar is going to commit the shield. Aerial Ace no shielded by Elite. Elite is going to get a very aggressive farm down with the Azumarill. Azumarill going to be hit with a charge attack. Rise going to settle for the Aerial Ace. Trying to go for the dig would have risked damage registration error, so he just goes for the guaranteed damage. In comes the charge of bug. Rise gonna stay in here and go for the surf. He wants some damage before he sends in the dugong. Surf will connect. Elite continues to farm the switch into the dugong, and dugong now to be met with the discharge. Rise with a decision to make. He shields the discharge, but Elite will be able to fire off another discharge before he gets a debuff. This discharge will do some pretty solid damage to the dugong, but dugong can continue to apply these debuffs. Debuff number one connects as Elite burns the final shield. Elite massively over farming, going for the egg scissor. It's only neutral, but the dugong has gotten low enough that this will pick up the KO. Back in comes the Lantern, he saves the x Scissor, switches into the Azumarill, he saves the move, resets the debuff, and now this is looking like a game win for Elite. Elite was in such a tough spot on the lead and the switch. We see he stares at the camera, he knows he's got the x Scissor loaded, x Scissor is going to KO the Lantern. Unbelievable gameplay there by Elite as he gets the Equalizer to push this to game number three. Game number three, Rise with a positive lead, leading Annihilate into the Guzzlord. Guzzlord farming up, going for the Dragon Claw, and we see a switch and a catch onto the Dugong for Rise. Rise going to be met with the Vigoroth, and this is very okay for Rise, because he can bait out the Vigoroth and then get even more energy by countering it down with Annihilate. Because any energy that Elite exits this matchup with is functionally useless against the Annihilate, as it's going to be debuffed and Annihilate resists everything that Vigoroth has. In comes the Annihilate. Elite will fire off the Rock Slide. This is debuffed and resisted. That's not going to do a lot of damage. And we see so much energy. In comes the Charger Bug. Rise baiting with the Night Slash. Such a tough call to make if you're Elite. He commits the shield on the Night Slash bait. Rise baiting again. Oh my, and we see the two shielded baits from Elite. Oh no, Rise banks the Shadow Ball, sends in the Wigglytuff, and we see the nod there by Elite as he realizes this game is over. There is nothing he can do to stop the wrath of Wigglytuff, and even if somehow he could get rid of the Wigglytuff, there's still a Shadow Ball loaded on this Annihilate. Firing off the Discharge, but Wigglytuff does not care. Wigglytuff just gonna get the full charm down here, making it to the Icy Wind. Icy Wind knocks out the Charger Bug. Guzzlord Enjoyers look away. The charms delete the Guzzlord and Rise advances. The Double Dark Umbreon unfortunately didn't get to make an appearance in Winner's Finals, so he will advance to the Grand Finals versus Shady Equation, who does not have a Dark Resist on his team. So there is the Umbreon, brought back in game number one. This time it's in the back, and we have a very neutral lead, Shadow Gligar versus Cresselia. I do honestly feel that this is one of the defining matchups of this particular meta. It's an extremely, extremely neutral matchup across the board. 
Dig connects, Moonblast connects, Rise can win charge attack priority. Instead, he's going to look to shield and massively overfarm. These wing attacks do add up quite a bit onto the Cresselia. So Rai is going to overfarm, going for the dig, as Aerial Ace wouldn't quite knock out here. Shady is going to call the bait, but dig will pick up the KO. In comes Lantern. Rai has so much energy. I absolutely love this bait. It's very threatening here. Shady forced to burn a shield. Shady does not go for the surf. He could have clicked surf and denied the energy, but instead he's going for the two shield farm down. Rise can't allow that to happen, so he's going to send in the double dark Umbreon, which is just so, so neutral in this matchup. And honestly, I do feel that that's one of the reasons why this Umbreon was used with this moveset, is coverage-wise, it is going to struggle in matchups where dark damage is resisted, but there's not a lot of dark resists in this current meta. So having access to both Dark Pulse and Foul Play just makes Umbreon an incredibly neutral presence into a lot of teams, and that's something that is very valuable when the goal is trying to have as much neutral play as possible. Rise is able to make it to the Dark Pulse. We've seen this before. Dark Pulse does a lot of damage to Shadow Whiskash. Whiskash farming up to 99 energy there. The switch into the Gligar to force the Mud Bomb. Mud Bomb double resisted, but the Gligar is low enough that that will KO. And in comes the Lantern. If the Switch Clock comes up for Shady, Shady will have a chance in this game. It's going to be very close. Switch Clock, about 10 seconds from being up. He's firing off the Mud Bomb. The Shield by Rise. Does the Switch Clock come up? No, just a half second from being up. But he's unable to save the Whiskash. The Surf connects, leaving him at 1 HP. In comes the Lantern. Lantern makes the Thunderbolt. But there's still the Umbreon available for Rise. Rise sends back in the Umbreon. Umbreon makes the Foul Play. Foul Play is going to be be able to knock out the one HP lantern and all that's left in the back is one HP on the Whiskash, unable to make a move and that's a game one win for Rise. Game two, leading the Umbreon. Again, just so neutral into this team. Even if it gets stuck against something like the Vigoroth, which Shady has in the back, it can still provide a massive amount of neutral play. Goes for the foul play. That gets caught onto Lantern as Shady realizes that his Lantern is so neutral into Rise's team. Rise now mirrors. We have the Battle of the Lanterns. Shady has taken some damage but is up a spark on that catch. The Thunderbolts will connect. Rise over farming quite a bit. Going for the Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts not going to be enough to knock out Shady from this health range but Shady is going to commit the shield. Shady would potentially love to try and make a play for a switch advantage here. He goes for the Thunderbolt. The shield from Rise. Rise going to to deny the opportunity for switch advantage for Shady. He's going for Thunderbolt number two. Shady going to let this through. Thunderbolt picks up the knockout and Lantern does exit with an ability to make a charge attack versus whatever gets brought in here. Rise going for the surf, not trusting the ability to make it to a Thunderbolt. And if he did make a bolt, then the Vigoroth could have just gone for charge attack priority. But now at this health range, the Vigoroth is a lot less threatening. The switch into the Gligar. Gligar going to be answered by Shady's Gligar. And this end game will get quite interesting here. As Shady does have a pretty significant health advantage, but he's now down a shield. So Rise can shield back, land an Aerial Ace, and Shady is going to be very, very low on his Gligar. This Aerial Ace will connect Shady in a difficult spot. How much does he decide to overfarm here? He's going to overfarm. He's very, very low. The question will be, can he survive the Snarls? Snarl, of course, does not do a lot of damage. In comes the Umbreon, and there's the absolute dagger in this game. Catching the dig on the fractional HP on that Lantern. In comes the Vigoroth, and he's going to fire off two foul plays here. Foul play number one, followed by foul play number two. Body Slam would not be enough to KO, so Shady doesn't throw it. And Rise, with a devastating catch, wins game two, and he's one win away from being regional champion. Game number three, Annihilate versus the Shadow Whiskash. He's going to fire off the Night Slash, trying to go for charge attack priority to the Scald, but Shady does not throw his energy. Shady now going to fire off the Scald. We see the Shield by Rise. Rise would love to potentially win Switch Advantage here. The Pivot by Shady. He's sending in the Lantern. He banks the Shadow Ball, sends in the Umbreon, and we just have the battle of both of these trainers' most neutral Pokemon in this matchup once again. That Umbreon now going to fire off the Dark Pulse. Two Dark Pulses will do some pretty substantial damage to the Lantern. Lantern, it looks like a second Dark Pulse will come very close to knocking out. I think Lantern should be able to hang on here, but it's not going to be by much. 
Thunderbolt will connect. Rise over farming. He's going to be firing off the Dark Pulse. Ended up throwing on alignment there. The Dark Pulse will connect. Shady does not get the move. He tried to click switch, but that is a situation where a one turn switch applies. You have to click after that move registers. Then he tries to go for the fast move. He ends up missing the charge attack. And now missing that charge attack this is looking incredibly good for rise the night slash does get shielded rise farm it up he's baiting once again annihilate up energy so deadly for skarmory skarmory commits the shield skarmory forced to fire off the sky attack to burn the final shield from rise the switch into the whisk cash rise his counts are perfect night slash may have ko'd there but he's taking no chances shadow ball ko's the whisk cash in comes the Skarmory. Skarmory looking for the farm down, but it's not going to happen. The Night Slash is reached. KO is the Skarmory. Rise doesn't even need to reveal the Gligar in the back. And Rise to the occasion is the 2024 Los Angeles Pokemon Go Regional Champion. Big congratulations to Rise. This was his first regional championship win of this season. He's obviously won them in previous seasons, but it's always nice to get a win in the current season. And I really liked how he thought outside the box with this team. He really tried to, in my view, come up with a Pokemon that could be really consistent neutrally and thought outside the box to do so with the double Dark Umbreon and tried to build the team around it. So that way it would be tough to bring opposing Dark types against his team. Since of course, he has Wigglytuff, which can shut down basically any other Dark type. He has Dugong, if the Dark type is a Mandibuzz or a Guzzlord. And he has Annihilate, if the Dark type is a Guzzlord or an opposing Umbreon. So I do think it's a very interesting team, cre like a, a style of team creation here. It feels a little bit reminiscent of what Inadequance did when Inadequance ended up winning Utrecht with Giratina, where he structured a team where he tried to make it very, very difficult for opponents to bring normal types. And he ended up winning the entire tournament. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.